Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about discipline or more specific. You see, I've met countless people over the years who come to me saying, Jim, I just can't seem to get ahead. There are no opportunities out there. But let me tell you something, and I want you to listen closely. You don't lack opportunities. What you lack is discipline. Now, I know that might be hard to hear. It's much easier to blame our circumstances, isn't it? It's easier to say, if only I had more time, or if only I had more money, or if only I knew the right people. But here's the truth. Opportunities are all around us. They're everywhere. The problem isn't a lack of opportunities. The problem is that we lack the discipline to recognize them, to seize them, and to make the most of them. Let me tell you a story. Years ago, I met a young man at one of my seminars. He was frustrated, feeling stuck in his job, convinced that there were no opportunities for advancement. He told me, Jim, I've been at this company for five years and I'm still in the same position. There's just no room for growth. So I asked him, what have you done in those five years to make yourself more valuable to the company? He looked at me puzzled. What do you mean? I said, have you learned new skills? Have you taken on additional responsibilities? Have you come up with innovative ideas to improve the business? He admitted that he hadn't. He'd been showing up, doing the bare minimum, and expecting opportunities to fall into his lap. And that's when I told him what I'm telling you. You don't lack opportunities. You lack discipline. You see, discipline isn't just about forcing yourself to do things you don't want to do. It's about consistently doing the things that move you towards your goals, even when you don't feel like it. It's about showing up every day, putting in the work, and making yourself more valuable. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Jim, you don't understand. My situation is different. And you're right, I don't know your specific situation. But I do know, no matter where you are, no matter what your circumstances, there are always opportunities to grow, to learn, to improve. The question is, do you have the discipline to seize those opportunities? Let's talk about what discipline really means. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. It's what turns dreams into reality. It's what separates the successful from the unsuccessful. Think about it. How many times have you set a goal, felt excited about it for a few days or weeks, and then slowly let it slip away? Maybe it was a New Year's resolution to get in shape. Maybe it was a plan to start a side business. Maybe it was a goal to read more books or learn a new skill. We all have these moments of inspiration, these bursts of motivation. But here's the thing. Motivation is fickle. It comes and goes. You can't rely on motivation to achieve your goals. What you need is discipline. Discipline is what gets you out of bed at 5 a.m. to work on your side business before your day job. Discipline is what makes you choose a salad instead of a burger when you're trying to lose weight. Discipline is what keeps you studying when your friends are out partying. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Jim, that sounds hard. That sounds like no fun. And you're right, it is hard. Discipline isn't always fun. But you know what's less fun? Regret looking back on your life and wondering, what if? What if I had put in the work? What if I had seized those opportunities? What if I had developed the discipline to pursue my dreams? You see, the pain of discipline weighs ounces, but the pain of regret weighs tons. Let me share another story with you. I once knew a woman who dreamed of starting her own business. She had a great idea. She had the skills. She even had some savings to get started. But year after year went by, and she never took the leap. Why? Because she lacked discipline. She would tell herself, I'll start next month, or I'll start when the timing is right. But next month never came, and the timing was never right. She always found excuses. I'm too tired after work, she'd say. Or I need to spend time with my family. Now, don't get me wrong. Rest is important. Family is important. But if something is truly a priority in your life, you find a way to make it happen. You carve out the time. You make the sacrifices. You develop the discipline. Years went by, and this woman watched as others launched similar businesses. 
She saw them succeed, saw them living the life she had dreamed of. And do you know what she said to me? She said, Jim, I guess I just never had the opportunity. But that wasn't true. She had the opportunity. What she lacked was the discipline to seize it. Now, I'm not telling you this story to make you feel bad. I'm telling you this story because I don't want you to make the same mistake. I don't want you to look back on your life with regret, wondering what could have been if only you had developed the discipline to pursue your dreams. So how do we develop discipline? How do we bridge that gap between where we are and where we want to? It starts with small, consistent actions. You see, many people think that discipline is about making big, dramatic changes in your life. But that's not true. Discipline is about the small things. It's about the choices you make every day. It's about choosing to wake up when your alarm goes off instead of hitting snooze. It's about choosing to work on your goals for an hour instead of watching TV. It's about choosing to save money instead of buying something you don't need. These small choices might not seem significant in the moment, but over time they add up, they compound, they create momentum. And before you know it, you've made significant progress towards your goals. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to write a book. That's a big goal, isn't it? It can seem overwhelming, but what if Instead of focusing on writing an entire book, you commit to writing just one page a day. One page? That's not so intimidating, is it? Most people can write a page in 15, 30 minutes. But here's the match. If you write one page every day for a year, you'll have written 365 pages. That's a book. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. But Jim, I don't have time to write every day. And to that, I say, you do have time. You just haven't made it a priority. The average American watches over four hours of TV every day. That's 28 hours a week, 112 hours a month. If you took one of those hours every day and devoted it to writing, you could write a book in a year. It's not about having time. It's about making time. It's about having the discipline to prioritize what's important to you. And that's the key, what's important to you. You have to decide what you're willing to sacrifice to achieve your goals. Because make no mistake, achieving your goals will require sacrifice. You might have to sacrifice sleep. You might have to sacrifice leisure time. You might have to sacrifice some of your social life. But here's the question you need to ask yourself. Is it worth it? Is achieving your goals worth the sacrifice? Only you can answer that question. But I will tell you this, nothing worth having comes easy. Success requires sacrifice. It requires discipline. Now let's talk about another aspect of discipline that's often overlooked, emotional discipline. You see, discipline isn't just about actions. It's also about controlling your thoughts and emotions. How many times have you let a negative emotion derail your progress? Maybe you got frustrated and gave up. Maybe you got angry and said something you regretted. Maybe you got scared and didn't take a chance. Emotional discipline is about managing these reactions. It's about not letting your emotions control your actions. It's about staying focused on your goals, even when you don't feel like it. This is especially important when it comes to dealing with failure and setbacks. Because let me tell you some, you will face setbacks, you will experience failure. It's not a question of if, but when. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people isn't that successful people never fail. It's that they have the discipline to keep going in the face of failure. Thomas Edison failed thousands of times before he successfully created the light bulb. When asked about it, he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That's emotional discipline. That's the ability to see failure not as a roadblock, but as a stepping stone. It's the discipline to learn from your mistakes and keep moving forward. Now I want to address something that I hear a lot. People often say to me, Jim, I'm just not a disciplined person. I wasn't born that way. And to that I, I say, discipline isn't something you're born with. It's something you develop. It's a skill, and like any skill, it can be learned and improved with practice. 
Think about it like building muscle. When you first start working out, it's hard. Your muscles are weak. You get tired quickly. But as you continue to exercise, your muscles grow stronger. You can lift heavier weights. You can work out for longer periods. Discipline works the same way. At first, it's hard. You might struggle to stick to your commitments. You might find yourself giving in to temptation. But the more you practice discipline, the stronger it becomes. And here's the beautiful thing. As you develop discipline in one area of your life, it spills over into other areas. Maybe you start by developing the discipline to exercise regularly. Suddenly, you find that you have more discipline when it comes to your diet or your work habits or your relationships. Discipline begets discipline. It creates a positive cycle of growth and improvement. But here's the catch. You have to start. You have to take that first step. You have to make the decision to develop discipline in your life. And that brings me to another crucial point. Discipline starts with a decision. It starts with a commitment to yourself. It starts with saying, this is important to me and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. You see, too many people wait for the perfect moment to start. They say, I'll start my diet on Monday or I'll start saving money next month or I'll start pursuing my dreams when the timing is right. But here's the truth. There's no perfect moment. The perfect moment is now. The perfect moment is whenever you decide to start. Because here's the thing, time is going to pass anyway. A year from now, you're going to be a year older whether you develop discipline or not. The question is, where do you want to be when that year has passed? Do you want to be in the same place you are now or do you want to be closer to your goals? The choice is yours. But I urge you, don't wait, don't put it off. Don't tell yourself that you'll start tomorrow. Start today, start now. Now I know developing discipline isn't easy. It's gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna be challenging. There will be days when you wanna give up. But I want you to remember some. Discomfort is the price of growth. Think about it. Anytime you've grown in your life, anytime you've improved, it's been because you pushed through discomfort. Learning to walk was uncomfortable. Learning to read was uncomfortable. Starting a new job was uncomfortable. But you did it. You pushed through the discomfort because the reward on the other side was worth it. So the same is true for developing discipline. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, there will be times when you want to give up. But the rewards of discipline far outweigh the temporary discomfort. Because here's what discipline gives you freedom. It gives you control over your life. It gives you the ability to shape your future. When you have discipline, you're no longer at the mercy of your emotions or circumstances. You're no longer waiting for opportunities to fall into your lap. You're creating your own opportunities. You're taking control of your life. And that, my friends, is true freedom. Now, let's talk about something that often gets in the way of discipline. Excuses. We all make them, I'm too tired. I don't have enough time. It's too hard. I'm not smart enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. But here's the thing about excuses. They're stories we tell ourselves to justify our lack of action. They're comfort blankets we wrap ourselves in to avoid the discomfort of growth. But if you want to develop discipline, if you want to achieve your goals, you have to be willing to let go of your excuses. You have to be willing to face the truth about why you're not where you want to be. Because here's the reality. For every excuse you have, there's someone out there who has overcome that same obstacle. For every reason you give for why you can't do something, there's someone who has done it despite facing even greater challenges. So the next time you find yourself making an excuse, I want you to stop and ask yourself, is this excuse more important than my goals? Is this excuse worth sacrificing my dreams for? And if the answer is no, and I hope it is, then it's time to let go of that excuse and take action. Now, I want to address something that's crucial when it comes to developing discipline. Consistency. You see, discipline isn't about perfection. It's not about never making mistakes or never falling off track. 
It's about consistency. It's about getting back up when you fall down. Too often, people give up on their goals because they make one mistake. They miss one workout, so they give up on their fitness goals. They overspend one day, so they give up on their financial goals. They procrastinate one day, so they give up on their productivity goals. But that's not how discipline works. Discipline is about consistency over time. It's about making the right choices more often than not. It's about progress, not perfection. So if you fall off track, and you will, because we're all human, don't beat yourself up. Don't use it as an excuse to give up. Instead, acknowledge the mistake, learn from it, and get back on track. Remember, it's not about never falling down. It's about always getting back up. Now, let's talk about something that's often overlooked when it comes to discipline. The power of habits. You see, discipline isn't just about willpower. It's not about forcing yourself to do things you don't want to do every single day. That's exhausting, and it's not sustainable. True discipline comes from developing habits. It comes from making the right choices so consistently that they become automatic. It comes from aligning your daily actions with your long-term goals. Think about it. When you first learned to drive a car, it required all of your focus and concentration. You had to think about every action, turning the key, pressing the pedals, checking your mirrors. But now, after years of practice, you can drive without even thinking about it. It's become a habit. The same principle applies to discipline. At first, it requires conscious effort. But over time, as you consistently make the right choices, they become habits. They become part of who you are. And that's when real transformation happens. That's when you stop having to force yourself to take action towards your goals. That's when discipline becomes a part of your identity. So how do we develop these habits? It starts with small, consistent actions. Remember what we said earlier about writing one page a day? That's the kind of small, consistent action that can develop into a powerful habit. Start small. Maybe it's reading for 10 minutes a day. Maybe it's saving $5 a day. Maybe it's doing 10 push-ups every morning. Whatever it is, make it small enough that you can do it consistently even on your worst days. Then do it every single day. No exceptions, no excuses. Because consistency is what turns actions into habits, and habits are what make discipline sustainable. Now, I want to address something that often gets in the way of developing discipline. The influence of our environment. You see, we're all influenced by our surroundings. The people we spend time with, the media we consume, the physical spaces we inhabit. All of these things impact our thoughts, our actions, and our habits. If you want to develop discipline, you need to create an environment that supports your goals. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, who challenge you, who support your growth. Consume media that educates you, that motivates you, that aligns with your values and goals. And here's something crucial. But distance yourself from negative influences. If there are people in your life who constantly discourage you, who drag you down, who tempt you to stray from your path, it might be time to reevaluate those relationships. I'm not saying you should cut people out of your life, but you do need to be mindful of the influence they have on you. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose those five people wisely. Your environment plays a crucial role in shaping your behavior. So make it work for you, not against you. Create an environment that makes discipline easier, that supports your goals, that reinforces your commitment to personal growth. Remember, discipline isn't just about willpower. It's about setting yourself up for success. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I want to leave you with this final thought. You have within you everything you need to achieve your dreams. You don't lack opportunities. They're all around you. What you need is the discipline to recognize those opportunities, to seize them, and to make the most of them. Discipline is the key that unlocks the door to success, to fulfillment, to the life you've always dreamed of. It's not always easy, but it's always worth it. So I challenge you today. 
Start developing your discipline. Start small, be consistent, and never give up. Because when you develop discipline, you don't just change your actions. You change your life. Thank you.